Hey guys, it's Val. Welcome back to Hollow Cocoon. So this is part three. I have caffeine in me today, so we will make a lot of progress, if not finish the game, actually. So last episode, we learned that Ayano is our grandmother's older sister. But something makes me think that maybe she's actual grandmother instead of our great aunt because my mom and me share this weird thing with water and they've mentioned it before so it's got to be important right and obviously ayano is not human i mean maybe part human but not all the way human and that would maybe explain like the disconnect between our grandmother and our mother besides that we did get an oil can and a ladder so i think we'll start with those today i don't think we got anything else but yeah let's go okay so let's see here oh so i'm already in the kitchen pretty much so let's go here i'm pretty sure this is where we use the oil can right for the rusty pump what's that money this is probably what we wash the that thing it was talking about, the talisman? Or no, not the talisman. I'll know it when I see it. I forgot. I have a really bad memory. I need to get all the way over to the shrine. Here we go. And a hiding spot in the same room. Wow. I'm just scary ladders with me, you know? A red mulberry crest. A painted circular piece of pottery. It has a red mulberry leaf crest painted on it. Okay. How do I get down? Just... Okay. Uh, and I think we saw something in the hall over there. Maybe we go back. What is she... I heard her. Oh... Let's hide. Please let this work. Why? Why are you right there? Okay, so I think I figured her out, how she works, right? Every time you do a puzzle. You either need to get out of the area and like get going to where you were going, and hopefully that's just not the area she comes from, or hide, because she is always going to go in that direction of where you were making progress. Look at her little butt. We got a stealth. Oh. I think that's where I need to go. We're close. <gasps> no, save me, spawn point. Or checkpoint. Let's see where we're at it. Yeah. Okay, we saved you. Good. And see the talisman sick thing? That leads me to believe that we're evil too. Like, we're part evil. Where am I going? Right there. I can't see shit. I gotta listen for her. I love how she doesn't know the doors are closing. Like she doesn't realize, oh, that means there's probably a person over there. go over here oh we never went to the, we never went to the altar room did we let's let's stay focused where were we going oh we saw this spade but we were gonna check out 
what was in the hall in the library. Okay, let's let's go. Okay, this is the altar room. I went here first. Oh no, we didn't. We haven't come in here yet. Lord Kyube ordered me to hide the mulberry crest displayed on the altar. The red mulberry crest has been hidden near the shrine, while the blue mulberry crest was buried next to the stone lantern in the courtyard. When I reported to Lord Kyobe after hiding them, he bowed his head and thanked me. It looked as if a big burden had been lifted. He had a calm expression which I had not seen in a long time. After Lady Ayano's passing, Lord Kyobe would look constantly agitated. He hardly slept, always drowned himself in books, and always appeared to be reading until his eyes went blood shot. That serene yet sorrowful expression left me with a sense of unease. Since then, Lord Kyobe has vanished without a trace. Okay, so we got the red mulberry crest, and now we know what we used the spade for. So we gotta go to the courtyard. Okay. Thank you. What is that? When I came home from work, I found Yui crying in the living room. I immediately went to check on her. I noticed her face and uniform were stained with blood, and in her trembling hands was a lifeless canary. It was the canary I had gifted her on her 13th birthday. When I asked her why this was, she said she was thirsty. So thirsty that she couldn't bear it, so she drank the canary's blood. I had hoped for her to have a normal childhood, but deep down I knew this day would come. I was horrified, but knew that Yui's heart would shatter if I did nothing. When I first held baby Yui in my arms. I made a vow to do anything for this child. Much like her mother, she is my pride and joy. I told the weeping Yui that she inherited her bloodlust from me. I feigned silence to let it sink in. By shouldering the blame for Yui's bloodlust, I hope to keep her grounded to the world. I offered my apologies through tears. Yui, in return, urged me not to cry. After that, I began going to the butchers to purchase blood. Yui and I would drink it together. What? The dad? No. What? What's this? There's two indentations. Okay, well, I need one more. Okay, so we'll go get we'll go get the other one. But that's not true. Oh, I, I will need you soon. Yeah, see. Get on in there. So yeah, so we need to go to the hall. I guess on our way back to the courtyard we could look for that stone lantern and dig up the other crest and then go and find out what's over here just gonna wait for Ayano to check things out the stone lantern it's this right oh a well bucket I was right This is where it's supposedly buried. The ground's too hard to dig by hand. I think that thing works pretty good. Uh, there we go. Yeah, it's the blue mulberry crest. Okay, so we need to... No, 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 no. Can I hide in this? Is she gonna see me? Did it take too long? Ayano, please. I guess I'll put the blue mulberry crest in while I'm in here. Right, yeah, like just get it out of my pockets. The mechanism activated. Oh, what am I doing? Oh. Wait, does it matter though which is on what side? Okay, we'll co we'll come back to that later cuz maybe maybe it needs to be done a certain way. This way, right?
I've received news of Ayano's return, yet I haven't been able to meet her since she first went missing. Despite my repeated requests to visit her, Lord Kyobe only responds with, Ayano is unwell. In the midst of my dark and gloomy days, I was suddenly summoned to the Miyama residence. Lord Kyobe stared me down with a grim expression. Ayano is afflicted with a severe illness. If you want to see her, you must marry Kinu and become part of the Miyama family, he demanded. If you change your mind after, you will not survive. As long as I can be with Ayano, I don't care what happens to me. Without hesitation, I accepted his request. Ayano was in the depths of a dark cave, trapped in a dungeon. She was almost unrecognizable. The woman I had fallen for was no longer there. To be honest, she seemed no longer human. More terrifying than Ayano's appearance was Kinu. How could Kinu be fine with all of this? Inside the cell, Kinu sat by Ayano, smiling blissfully. A chilling sensation ran down my spine. A plate. A vibrantly painted plate with excellent craftsmanship. Oh, that's what it was. It was a plate. We need to hide. She's gonna come in here. So if I dip this plate, well, I don't know that I need to dip it in the well, actually. If I just rinse it under the water pump, it'll display, cause it's got those four circles. It'll display where I need to put them, I think. Is she not gonna come? It's because I'm prepared, isn't it? Okay, well, so much for that. Uh, let's see here. Um, oh, I never went to the library. Let's, let's go while we're here. Maybe she wants me to be in the library first. It feels like ages ago when we all celebrated Ayano's safe return. Shimamaru, my friend and doctor, went above and beyond to help her. Ayano had been gradually losing her sanity and her appearance was deforming. Watching my daughter mutate before my eyes, I was on the brink of losing my own sanity. How many times did I ask the heavens for her recovery? No matter how many times I called Ayano's name, she looked at me with her blood red eyes. She tilts her head in confusion. She no longer recognizes me. Ayano has transformed into a monster. Amidst my fervent search for a cure, I stumbled upon an ancient document left by our ancestors, containing the term Princess Possession. According to it, Princess Possession is a condition that transforms women into monsters, and if we use a certain cocoon to treat Princess Possession, we can reverse the transformation, restoring her to her original form as a woman. With this cocoon, I am confident that I can cure Ayano. Oh. What? You want that? It's locked. Oh, I probably have to solve that dial thing, right? So we need to make it to the well and to the kitchen for the water pump. So let's do the kitchen and then the well, I think. I think this is right anyway. We'll see. Yeah. Oh, okay. A pattern appeared. So we got green, top, blue, right, red, bottom, black, left. Okay. So green, blue, red, black. Did I do the well? But see, I don't have like a rope or anything. There wasn't a rope in the well, was there? No, we get to solve a puzzle. Let's close those. Not like it'll stop her. So we've got this plate. So it's green, blue, red, black. Here we go. What is this? The library key? What did I miss in the- Was there something locked in the library? Oh, there's a little hiding spot. Okay, so I guess we'll go to the library. Oh, was it this door? Oh, I didn't realize there needed to be a key there. Okay, makes sense. I guess it is an odd looking key. Whoa. Where am I? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Is, it, is she in here? Okay. Wow. 
Saichi, agitated, told me he had discovered a way to cure my sister. What was this man thinking? He had once recoiled at the sight of my sister. He abandoned us and fled to town with Yui. I have never found Ayano to be ugly. No matter how many years pass, she remains as enchanting as ever. I have kept her hair long and sleek and her lips red. I was always jealous of her beauty and still am. Ayano is as beautiful as ever. Saichi is trying to separate us. Such a thing must not come to pass. I cannot bear it. I will not allow Saichi to take Ayano from me. I threw my pearl hairpin into the well. I have tried to discard that thing many times, yet I could never bring myself to do it. I asked Saichi to retrieve the hairpin. He chuckled and assured me, don't worry, I'll get it for you. I embraced Saichi from behind as he peered into the well to retrieve it. I drew him closer into my soft embrace. What's the matter, Kinu? I heard his gentle voice. It's nothing, I replied. Then with all my strength, I pushed him straight into the well. That was the first and last time I touched Saichi. That bitch. Right, silkworm wooden tag. Oh! She's coming. No way she saw me! No way! No way! Oh! I hate you! Where the F am I? Get out of my way! Oh, is she gonna... You know what? You know what, Ayano? Why does it take me 10 years to get up off the damn floor? Where the fuck am I going? Can you follow me into bushes? And rocks? Did I trick you? I LOS'd you too much. Okay, so we have this like tag. I'm pretty sure that's what I saw at the bottom of the well. Because this is right silkworm, so I guess there's a left one. But I saw something red at the bottom and it looked like one of these little um, winning tickets. But it makes sense that it's this, so it's the left one. So now I guess we try to go to the well, right? I gotta, I gotta go over here. Oh, there is rope, okay. We gotta do this. Yeah. I don't know where you are, but I'm sure you're gonna come with me anyway. So I'll just, I'll just unlock this and we'll go, we'll go together. Okay. Are we done with that house? Can we go back? Where's our dad? He has some explaining to do. Okay, it's really quiet in here. Need a key. Money. Oh, I can hide in here. No. There's a checkered tray with old man written on it. Ayano, 1933. I was awakened in the middle of the night by someone pounding on my door. I went out to see a panicked servant from the Miyama family. Miss Ayano, who had been missing since she ventured into the mountains, had returned. I couldn't believe my ears. Despite my disbelief, I trudged through the snow and arrived at the Miyama mansion, my medical supplies in hand. Miss Ayano was leaning against her sister, Miss Kinu. They were seated on a tatami mat. 
Miss Ayano was just sitting there, staring blankly. I was concerned about her mental and physical state, but upon inspecting her, there wasn't a scratch on her. It was difficult to fathom how she had spent a month in the cold, frigid mountains unharmed. Then a rather unsettling sensation washed over me. A month has passed since her return. She still doesn't speak and spends all day in her room staring into space. Whenever someone tries to talk, she only glances at them. However, Miss Kino is by her side. She seems to be happy. She leans against her with a smile. Their two sisters who lost their mother as a child. They must be like two halves of a whole. Lord Kyobe mentioned, she's a timid girl. I am not surprised she does not want to speak after that, but there seems to be something amiss. She drinks water like she's about to die of dehydration. She hasn't eaten nor slept since her return. Furthermore, she doesn't need to go to the bathroom. The cherry blossoms are in full bloom, yet Miss Ayano remains sheltered in her dark room. When did she last touch sunlight? Yesterday, Lord Kyobe opened the door to her room, intending to show Miss Ayano the cherry blossoms. However, However, as soon as the sunlight poured in, something terrifying happened. Miss Ayano let out a piercing scream and crumpled to the floor. It sent shivers down my spine. Her skin appeared inflamed, as if she had suffered a severe sunburn. Beneath the damaged skin, I could see her raw, reddened flesh. Miss Ayano keeps losing weight, but it is somehow growing taller. Or perhaps it would be more accurate to say that her limbs are becoming elongated? She used to be petite, but now she's taller than I am. Furthermore, no matter what injuries she sustains, they miraculously miraculously heal within a matter of days. Her burns from the other day have completely healed, not a single scar remaining. Yet there is something even more chilling than this transformation. There are moments when Miss Ayano stares at me. Her sunken hollow eyes glare at me as if she were a predator and I was her prey. My worst fears have come true. Lord Kyobe had secluded Miss Ayano. She is in total isolation. Miss Kino is burdened with the sole responsibility of caring for her. And then, tragedy struck. Miss Ayano bit and fatally wounded one of the servants. She ate her. That night, I told Lord Kyobe that there was nothing I could do. He pleaded with me, please, do not abandon Ayano. I couldn't stand seeing the anguish in the eyes of my dear friend. It felt as if my heart would tear in two. I found myself forging Miss Ayano's death certificate. A doctor should never do this, but for the sake of my friend, I had to. To conceal the murder, we used the body of a servant as a decoy. This is how we faked Miss Ayano's death. It was the only way to protect her from the public. Lord Kyobe and I decided to confine her to the dungeon, connected via the hidden passage. This is the fourth spring since Miss Ayano's return. She remains imprisoned within those walls. She survives by consuming the blood of chickens, cows, and sometimes even humans. Her once beautiful figure is no more. She is a mere shadow of her former self. Her nose has receded and her left eye is punctured. In its place, multiple insect-like eyes have emerged. Upon her pale back, a pattern resembling the markings found on a silkworm have taken form. Nowadays, unless accompanied by Miss Kinu, I dare not approach Miss Ayano. Should I venture in alone, she would undoubtedly tear me apart. Miss Kinu told me, sometimes my sister experiences stomach cramps. I conducted an examination and noticed movement within her abdomen. Ever since Miss Ayano's return, I had noticed a gradual swelling of her abdomen. Initially, I attributed it to ascites, caused by malnutrition. But to my shock, it appears that she is pregnant. If she is indeed pregnant, she has been so for six years. Nine years have passed since that fateful day. How much longer can I maintain my sanity? My dear friend Kyobe has vanished without a trace. Tonight, aided by Miss Kinu, we will extract the child from Miss Ayano. Her body has undergone too many transformations over the past nine years. She is incapable of giving birth. We have no alternative but to surgically open her abdomen and remove the child, a C-section. My body trembles in fear. I wonder if the child will bear any resemblance of a human. The truth is, it will not be born of a human. Wait, how does she get pregnant? Has she been pregnant for six years? How? So obviously, my mother was her daughter. So she's my she's my grandma. And Kinu is Kinu is actually my great aunt. But that explains why there was all those chickens and stuff. I think I can run in here because I don't I don't think she's gonna be able to come in here. Old picture. So we need a key. What is in here? The dresser drawer is locked. There are mountain grapes depicted here. I don't see any mirrors. What? What kind of trans... What's that translation? 
A mirror. I was talking about mountain grapes. I don't see any mirrors. Okay, let's read this. Father gave us a trick box. He said, it's a rare toy. He told us that it was a box that would only open when turned in a specific order. Ayana was worried about forgetting the sequence, so we created a secret story together to remember it. Once upon a time, there lived a nice old man. He found a mysterious boat in the mountains. Inside the boat, there was a princess. The old man cared for the princess, but she caught a disease and passed away. The princess's body turned into a pure white silkworm. The silkworm continued to spin its thread until it became a large cocoon. Oh, Mountain Great Mirror. Okay. It just said Mountain Grapes. <laughs> I was like, what does that mean? Uh, okay. Well, we can at least put this in this one. Yui has died. IG informed me she threw herself onto the railroad tracks two evenings ago. I knew this would happen. There was no way Yui, who bore such a striking resemblance to my frail sister, could bear it. There was no way she could. On that day, Yui came to see me alone. She was all dressed up, not unlike my sister would be. My feelings of disdain came rushing back. She was a splitting image of Ayano, who I both loved and despised. Yui is a mere imitation of her. Yui had the same face and voice as my sister. Why do you hate me? She asked. Since she wanted to know that badly, I escorted her to the dungeon and showed her the truth. You are not my child, nor are you Saichi's. You are cut from the womb of that abomination. It is in the nature of a monster to crave blood. Out of pity, Saichi lied and said your bloodlust was from him. For many years, against his will, he had to choke down blood alongside you, a monster child. Finally seeing the truth, Yui turned speechless. She didn't scream. She didn't cry. She just stood there. I do not know what Yui did thereafter. I do not care about what happened to her. Mom, the daughter of a monster. Yeah. Okay, trick box. Six sides have the following words. Okay. So maybe she's like the type of species that like doesn't need a, a mate to make a baby. Because I was like, how did Saichi mate with her? Because she's the way she is i can imagine she would just like rip the flesh off of his bones <laughs> all right this is where this goes old man so old man boat yeah so old man boat disease silkworm cocoon wow that was that was a pretty good guess okay golden key hidden in the trick box golden key so i need to find uh oh was it for that butterfly thing where the hell was that there it is. Nice. Oh, this is the other mirror. Okay. There we go. Kinu looked so sad and resentful. She said, Ayano, you are like a butterfly. This left me speechless. All I could do was hold back my tears. It pains me to see Kinu suffer because of me. All I want is for Kinu to be happy. But I am not a butterfly. I am more like a silkworm. I was given mulberry leaves in a warm silkworm room. I never needed to leave and always had someone to care for me. My body dissolves within the cocoon and I dream without ever being able to fly. I merely cling to life, but so long as Kinu is by my side, I am content. Considering Kinu's feelings, maybe it's better I leave this silkworm room. If I disappeared, Kinu could be with Saichi, yet I can't bring myself to leave. My marriage to Saichi is approaching, and the more I realize how little time we have left, the more I cherish my time with Kinu. I know what happens to silkworms once they leave the silkworm room. That is what I'm afraid of. If it were up to me, I would remain by her side forever. Wow. 
cream key. What in the world did I need that for? I don't know. There's something off there. Or do I exit? I don't know. Save again. I'm a sucker. Yes. Now you know why. Yay, okay. So are we gonna set her free? And put her in a cocoon? Whoa, this is spooky. Wow. Kinu abandoned me. Kinu was crying. Kinu hates me and loves Saichi. I don't want Kinu to cry. I want death. I met her. She is too pure. I cry and she hugs me. She shoots threads and we form cocoon together. In the cocoon, we dissolve and merge together as one. I am being lost. I stop being me. I forget many things. Her memories replace mine. She keep eating me. I so thirsty. Give me water. Blood red water. Who old man outside standing there? Ayano, he cries. Who is Ayano? I think it's me. Old man enters cell. He stroked my head and cry. Kinu laughed and said bon appetit. <gasps> Kinu gave me tasty water. She called me with gentle voice. I happy. Kinu is precious. Save me. Save me. I'm scared. I'm scared. I forget Kinu. She ate almost all of me. Who am I? Where do I begin? Please, no eat memories of Kinu before I forget Kinu. Kill me. Wait. Old man. So Kinu fed, uh, was it their dad or the doctor? Maybe it was the doctor to, to Kinu or to Ayano. <laughs> How do you, how do you get up? Okay. What? Ayana was constantly vomiting blood. She has since stopped moving. She drank the blood I had prepared for her, knowing I had poisoned it. I had no other choice. I was sick and dying. Soon I would be sleeping with the fishes. My frail arms were withered like a dead tree branch. This was the only thing I could do. Once I'm gone, who will care for my sister? Who will bathe her, trim her nails, and brush her hair every day? How will society treat her? They will look at her with fear and morbid curiosity and call her a crazy monster. She will be treated as subhuman. I cannot subject my sister to this fate. My greatest fear was forgetting my sister. My sickness grows and my memories are fading. Each night I lay down with an unbearable headache. The anxiety crushes my soul. The nagging question of if I will even remember her the next morning. I killed everyone, my father, Saichi, Yui, and even my sister. I was left alone with a noose. I am dying in pain. I apologize. I know how my sister really felt, but I treated her poorly out of envy, despite knowing how vile it was. I admired everything about her. This is why I despised her. My sister was the only one who truly understood me, despite knowing how cruel and merciless I could be. Yet still, Ayano cared for me more than anyone else. When the sun set, she would light up the house for me. She did so to prevent me from falling. My eyes and legs are old and weak. She would always gently massage my wrinkled cold hands. Her mind mind is almost completely void of memories, yet she never forgot about me. That is enough. We found happiness in our own way. We knew all things come to an end. Forgive me, as this was the only way to save my sister. I do not know what happened to her on that day. I do not know who the she she writes about is, but I, like her, also wish to dissolve in a cocoon and become one with my sister. So, she tried to kill herself and Ayano... <laughs> What, what is this? What is this? Ayano wanted to save her, so she... <gasps> what the fuck? Can I go anywhere? Can I... Can I look at stuff?
Jump through there. Jump through this. You jump through it. <laughs> it moved it. Oh my gosh. No, honey. Can I use anything in here? Okay, well, you're really easy to dodge. Do I have to hang myself? I don't get it. Okay, listen. We have been ring around the Rosian with this bitch for a long time. No! I can't even read it. Come on. What? Oh, do I have to make you like jump at it? Come on. So we got that one. I just gotta get her to jump at me. or spare her we're gonna I'm sorry you have such a sad life I have to put you out of your misery あなたを許すことはできないけれどそれでも話をしたかったよ綾野さんのことは誰にも父さんにすら話してないあなたに毒を飲まされても死ねなかった綾野さんはあなたを縄から下ろして助けようとしたんだ絹さんを抱いて
もしかすると綾野さんは今もあなたを探しているのかもしれないここは時期湖の底に沈むもうここには来ないよさようなら。に生涯さいなまれることになっても俺の中にどんな血が混じっていてもそれでも俺は人として生きるよ綾のばあちゃん。Wow, that story, um... Was way different than what I could have imagined it being. I did really like that game. I guess it was kind of nice to have a, a weird story like that. It wasn't as predictable. I did kind of guess some stuff, but yeah, it was refreshing. Tell me what you thought down below, and we'll see you guys in the next one. All right, so we decided to see what the other ending was going to be. I'm going to I'm going to spare her and see what happens. I am no bad. ダム建設の話もどうやら立ち消えになりそうだし。頼む。おかしなことを言わんでくれ。帰ってきてくれ。大学のことはもういい。お前と会って話をしたいんだ。父さんにはわからないよ。父さんの人だから。俺のことは忘れて、二度と電話をよこさないでくれ。みなと。